What is up everybody, Chris from Team Aquascape. We are in the midst of a sprawling, gorgeous estate out here in the far west suburbs. an exceptional and unique opportunity to rebuild a formal pond out here on this majestic piece of property. You guys ready to see us do this renovation or what? Let's go. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. As I said, we are out here on a gorgeous estate. You see everything is prim and proper, well-maintained. It's just a gorgeous estate. Goes on for what feels like miles out here, that way, out in the front of the house. But we are here to do one thing, one thing, and that is to bring back to life a formal water feature that the customer has asked us to come in and renovate this thing. And it's so cool because it fits with the overall landscape design. And I just love the idea of putting the aquascape ecosystem approach onto this thing, making it fully functional. We're gonna provide much better circulation and a wetland filter, an intake bay, all the good stuff, the bells and whistles, circulation jets, a lot of really cool lights. But before I get into too much more detail, let me turn the camera on and show you what we're dealing with. So right here is that, I don't know, gosh, I would say it's probably 50 feet long by about 10 feet wide skimmer on both ends right so you guys can understand why there's a circulation challenge but just so awesome there are coping stones that go all the way along over here that have been stacked up they are numbered so that they know exactly how to get placed back on there but we are here to rip everything out dig it down deeper create a wetland filter on that end an intake bay on this end some circulation jets along the side some lighting and we are going to basically keep the exact same shape of this thing which is what i think is so cool to show how versatile the aquascape ecosystem approach is. So he's got some enormous fish in here, but the lilies are also part of his prized possession. So we're really, really trying to make a gorgeous lily pond out of this with crystal clear water, but watching the fish swim and move throughout the stems in this long, elegant, formal feature is just going to be incredible. And that is the goal, is to get this thing operational while still keeping with the motif of what is already a gorgeous home and landscape. So we've got our work cut out for us, no machine access, at all so we're gonna have to hand dig everything in through here manually remove everything but we've got a group of guys from all over the country certified aquascape contractors I think we've got one two three four five six we've got seven eight nine I think we're gonna have close to 15 guys on this project for a majority of it which will help because we need the small army to get all this crap out of here so that we can get the new stuff in so you guys ready to roll Ready. Yes, sir. All right. Well, we'll get into introductions here in a little bit, but I think Dan is up top with the rest of the gang, and we got to get this project laid out and covered up so that we can minimize the amount of damage that we incur. And then we're going to get going, get this thing drained, and get that water into tanks, and then we'll start removing everything. Protected mats are down. We are starting to drain now. And then once this thing's empty, then the real work begins. All right, so we got a majority of the tanks filled. We're gonna go ahead and start pulling out lilies and drain the rest of the pond. guys are starting to corral some of these fish into here. There you go, good. These sock nets are super awesome because what they'll do is they will actually trap water into the net with the fish, keeping them neutrally buoyant so that their gizzards and innards all stay intact and a nice safe way to transport fish. So glad we have those, especially on some of these bigger fish. So always wanna make sure you take care of them while you're transporting and moving fish. They're already gonna be stressed out enough as it is, but we wanna do everything we can to take care of them. All right, so demo is now underway. Got all the lilies out, all the fish out. We're trying to rinse this stuff, get all the sludge out that we can, just to make it a little bit easier and less sloppy for us as we're going through. So we're gonna use some of the pond water as well as get some of these tanks off of the grass. So good idea by, the, by Jeff and keep rolling. We are 
well underway with demolition. You can see we've got almost all the rock and gravel out of here, which is a huge milestone, but I wanted to show you what we found. Now, I guess I understand the idea, but this whole bottom drain system for a cleanup, you can see how it failed. It's just full of sludge and debris and cobbles, and there was really no way for all of the sediment and debris to get down to what is kind of a makeshift snorkel down at the bottom of that. So I guess the idea was there, but the execution again, just like with the rest of the pond, failed because of kind of a misunderstanding, I think, of how the system should have been truly designed and constructed. So we're pulling all that crap out. It is kind of neat to see some of our products used here, just used in an incorrect fashion. So we'll give them maybe a B for effort, but a D minus on the execution. But as soon as we get all this crap out, then we can start getting the dirt out of here and really start shaping this thing out. And then, yeah, this project is moving right along. It's great having so many able bodies just working together. So like good old fashioned, well, this is kind of a barn teardown before the barn raising. So we'll get it. Huge milestone. Look at this. Yeah! What'd you say, Juan? That's the smartest thing you've said all day. All right, so we just got done pulling out one skimmer that has been engineered to fit the needs of this former pond, but that's what we are working with. The guys did a fantastic job of getting everything out very efficiently and effectively. You know, when you've got three, five, eight, 11, and a half people out here. It's amazing what can get done. So we've got all the components and stuff out. Now it's time to dig. So we are going to eliminate all of these interior shelves and just leave this one right here all the way around. Intake bay is going to go over here. Wetland filter over there. So we have an enormous amount of dirt that still has to come out of here. And then we will lay the fabric and liner in, get our components built. And uh, we've got a little bit of cleanup left to do here, but now it's diggy, diggy, diggy. This is always my favorite part. It is day two out here on our formal pond rebuild. The guys have already dove headfirst into excavating. We got the transit set up. We figured out our elevations and our depths. We are gonna go to a three and a half foot deep area down here. That's that horizontal white line. And we're gonna work our way out of here. So the only way out is coming up over here. Wheelbarrows are gonna run that way. When we fill them, we're gonna dump them into the dingo bucket back over there. And then Juan or somebody will take it all the way to the front and start getting rid of this dirt on site. It's all always always much much easier when we can figure out and negotiate a mutually beneficial situation with the homeowner to keep as much dirt on site rather than us having to haul it away for you pond builders out there always try and be creative and think about how you can get rid of the dirt on site it saves a lot of time and money for you and your customer anyways got a lot of dirt to get out of here today I think it'll be fun for you guys to watch the time lapse and watch this small army make light work of this pond excavation same way we did yesterday with the demolition you can see we got all of our rock all along here. That will end up coming back in here. We've got another six tons of boulders and another nine tons of gravel to help recreate this ecosystem pond. It is going to be incredible. So they're gonna work on digging out this second shelf first, creating a pathway, and then we will use the spoils all the way down at that end, throw it down, and we're gonna fill in this unnecessary trench down in here. The challenge that we have today, as you can see right where Dan's at, is we have all of these kind of baseball, softball sized cobbles in here. So every shovel full is exposing a lot of this stuff. So there's only so much we can do. So we're kind of picking at it, loosening it up, and then filling up the wheelbarrows and getting it out of here. Fortunately for us, we've got some heavy duty underlayment. We may end up bringing in a little bit of sand just as a bedding material, but we're gonna see how smooth and nice and clean we can get the substrate before we put the heavy duty fabric over the top. So we are going to have an incredible day today. Hope you guys enjoy the ride.
are day three, everybody, out here on this beautiful project. We made a hell of a lot of progress yesterday. Got our wetland virtually excavated. We got a little bit of cleanup left to do in through here, not much, but what I can hear is the beeping behind me, which means our stone and bulk material order is here. And it is a long road all the way up here. So why don't we take a walk back and go check in with Moose and see how he's doing back there. This is the start of our eighth mile journey. Coming all the way back in through here. What a gorgeous, gorgeous property. Beautiful day, absolutely beautiful. So blessed to have so many bodies out here because it really makes light work, especially with all that digging. But then we have tons and tons and tons of bulk material that we need to get back. So get back in through that area, in through there. You guessed it, we're still on our way down the driveway on this beautiful property. You can hear the Moffat now which is that piggyback machine that rides on the back of the trucks that unloads the pallets, hoppers, and super sacks for us. So I see him, there he is. The man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Glenn, AKA Moose. wondered where all of the dirt from the project went. Well, it all came back here and we made a road for us to go in and out and for Moose to bring his Moffat in over between those two trees right there. He's gonna drive in and get it as far back as he can. The challenge is this right here. Because that Moffat is so tall with the cab, he can only bring it so far. So we're gonna have to slap a lot of stuff back and forth using wheelbarrows and the dingo, which is why it was so important to get this road built before he got here. Because we knew, looking at the side and the challenges and the restrictions that we had on it that we were only gonna be able to do so much with that machine so there's still an enormous amount of heavy lifting that needs to be done by the team so we're up for the challenge that's for dang sure but all in the name of the game I'm trying to run a project mm -hmm. 